Good evening and welcome to VI Voices. I'm Emil Henderson III along with Clint Ferris, Boyd McFarlane, and Yoki Hanley. So now we continue our election coverage as we have with us the gubernatorial team of Soraya Diasi Kofelt and John Kanagata. When we talk with them, we get a little bit more um, about what they plan to do um, as they're going into the general election and what they plan to bring for the people of the Virgin Islands if in fact they are elected. It is an important time, so please be sure to tune in and make sure that you are we are asking all the questions that you feel that we should be asking. And if you see them on the street, be sure to stop them and ask them. Or actually go to their websites or wherever they are and ask more questions. So when we return, we will have with us Sarah Diasi Kofelt and John Kanagata. Back in a moment. Good evening and welcome back to VI Voices. Tonight we are honored to have with us Sora Diasi Kofelt and John Kanegeda who are seeking your vote for the 2014 gubernatorial election and they are number one on your ballot. Yes. Welcome to both of you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you, guys Thank you for now, having us. John, you've been here before. Uh, two years ago. Two absolutely. years ago and this is your first time yes, being with us. Yes, it is. Thank so. you. Yes. Welcome to VI Voices. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. Now, to get this part of the way, you are getting to the ballot has been somewhat tumultuous yes. as you all have had to fight to get yourself Just a little. to this ballot. Tell us yes. a little bit about, <laughs> now that you've gotten on the ballot, what has the experience been since that point going forward? Since we've gotten back, back on, the, on the ballot. Yes. Uh, we're fighters. And people come up to us and they congratulate us for fighting. It's, and we call it the good fight of faith because mm -hmm. we believe in our team. And we believe very strongly in the people of the Virgin Islands and the message that we have for the people of the Virgin Islands. So even though some people may say we've started late, we've actually been in it a long time, but we were just held back by the court case. At one point, the district court judge had actually stopped us from campaigning, even right. though uh, we had asked so that when we went on appeal, we could continue with the campaign, but we were stopped from campaigning. But we're back on, and we're really happy, and we're fighters, and that's what we've proven, and we will continue to fight because our people are really hurting. Now, what is interesting about your team is that you are an independent candidate. Yes. And you are a Republican. It's a Republican. And this is probably one of the first times in our history that we've had um, a mixed team, I should say, running. Ticket. Nothing illegal. No, no. The first <laughs> no we're time, not illegal. First time that this has <laughs> happened. And I said on the show before uh -huh. that this will probably be the last time. Uh, if you, if these people have their way, uh -huh. this will probably be the last time we see something like this. Um, but tell us a little bit about how you've been able to mesh your your ideologies together that will work for the people of the Virgin Islands. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll start. Um, what is fundamentally important is that John and I share the same Christian faith. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what really draws us together. From the minute I met John, uh, we've, we've hit it off. And we have very similar values. We believe very strongly. We have strong Christian beliefs. We believe uh, in families. We believe in honor and integrity. And that's, what, that's an important thing that we bring to the campaign. Um, and uh, again, very similar beliefs. Yeah. Now, tell us a little bit about what are the, at least, give us the three main areas that you feel that this team is going to tackle the minute you go through the doors of Government House in January. Okay. Do you want me to go? It's almost a unison. <laughs> we should have both said energy, but I'll obviously yes. <laughs> let the governor speak. Go okay, right thank you. Uh, the first primary issue and our commitment to the people of the Virgin Islands is that we will tackle the high electricity costs. We believe that we can bring them down at least half of what they are now and John worked at Havenza for 20 years, 15 of those years he worked in the energy division. He is very experienced with energy and I can turn it over to him to speak sure. more about our energy policy in the beginning, but that's critical. We have to bring down the electricity costs. And I can go on. Uh, I have a vision, a grand vision, that we are the economic leader, the economic powerhouse in the Caribbean. I firmly believe that. I firmly believe that the people need a vision to where we're gonna strive towards. And 
uh, it's an achievable vision. It's not something that is just a pie in the sky. We can achieve it. And I believe everything revolves around the economy. Once we have a sick economy, we see with the results. Uh, everybody's hurting. If we have a good economy, we'll, everyone will be prospering. So the economy's in the center, but in order to have a better economy, we must first deal with WAPA. Correct. I think on two years ago when I came on the show, you know, I think I confidently stated that our first actions not even cost the, the Virgin Islands a penny. And it was in regards to, to a legislation that was passed. It was um, one of uh, my platform issues in regards to using a single payer usage fund to ensure that WAPA is paid the money owed by the government. Um, that money is not going to be established or, or given to um, a specific agency in their budgets, but it'll be put in a specific fund so WAPA will have the necessary money to do the repairs. Uh, ultimately, we have to make WAPA more efficient. If they want to be more efficient, they have to repair their equipment on time. But to repair their equipment on time, they need money. So initially, I think the leadership that Soraya and myself offer is just to go in there and start to just assist the board, assist the executive director to properly manage the money they currently have to ensure that it's going to the right areas where we can do the maintenance to see the high heat rates and the fuel usage being reduced. Okay. So, you know, beyond that small portion, there's just so much more dynamics in regards to that. But within our first hundred days, um, we're going to hit the ground running. We have our energy experts, you know, in, in our, you know, in our team, ready to move forward. To, to assist the Virgin Islands in reducing these rates. Um, yes. Mr. Kanegator, I, I see, I, I applaud your commitment towards sure. energy, but I see WAPA <coughs> scampering, yeah. uh, are playing catch up. Okay. Instead of being bold and putting forth a, a plan, WAPA is just starting to just pull things here from the every, here, there, and everywhere. Correct. To show up its energy load and then bring the cars down. Correct. Are you going to take take the lead and say direct whopper let's let's put forth let's be bold let's float some bonds let's build a new plant let's move the plant from Christianstead let's put it to the south shore is that a part of your energy plan I think we all know exactly what needs to be done right uh, in, in regards to being bold uh, these are the steps that our team are going to take you know I don't I don't think there's a more courageous candidate than Soraya I would not run with somebody who is not committed to to really turning this bird down around and that's not a part of this team well, first of all, in regards to making those bold moves, yes, we are going to step in right there. Uh, we, as as uh, Judge, Judge Diasi, you know, she knows about negotiating. She has been a lawyer for well over 25 years. We believe that her expertise in going in and revising some of these contracts, because which will be there's some shenanigans going on, that's probably not in the best interest of the people. So from that point, yes. But in regards to, let's say, the recent um, Tibar action, I'd like to applaud the GRS board for not moving forward with that. I think it was a, it was a, it was a bad plan. Um, the, the whole Toshiba project moving forward, I think it's great for the Virgin Islands. It's moving in a green direction. We're utilizing some of that alternative energy. But some of the costs, I think the cost we're paying for that green energy is just too much. Um, that, that There's too much in regards to what we should be paying. If you look at our neighbors next door, uh, it's not that, that Puerto Rico is more bold or more courageous than us, but they're mandating, and this is coming from the leadership, not from the directors of PREPA, which is equivalent to WAPA. It's coming from the leadership and says, we're going to mandate that when you guys produce power for us, it's going to be 7,500 um, heat rate per, per million BT, per BTU or per kilowatt. So 700 BTUs per kilowatt. They're saying that we're not going to buy power if it's not less than 10 cents per kilowatt. That's the type of bold moves that this team is ready to move forward. We, we, we clearly understand that the lifeblood of this island is going to be solved once we solve this energy crisis. All the other issues are going to fall right in order. But right now, we're totally distracted with the high rates that businesses and residents are currently paying for electricity. Okay. So we're ready to take the bold action. Yes, we have to have a short-term plan yes. and a long-term plan. I agree. I believe the plant needs to be moved from Richmond to the South Shore. But we have to have a plan. Again, short-term, medium-term, long-term. And as John mentioned, as a lawyer, I look at the VITAL contract, for example, and I say, when were they supposed to actually have those propane tanks in the ground and ready for, for providing uh, the production of energy via propane for us? We were promised September, which is this month. Now I was at a PSC hearing last night, and based on what I heard from the Georgetown consultant, it's been pushed off to I think it's March or April next year. Do you know how much, according to the Georgetown consultant, that is co co costing us, the ratepayer? $27 million. That's absurd. $27 million for that delay, but then they say it's March or April 2015. Well, that's not good. It, 
we can have a, an aggressive policy. As a lawyer, there's no way you're going to tell me we're going to meet a deadline, and you're not going to meet the deadline. There have to be penalties if you don't meet a deadline. But uh, um, Mr. Kanegate mentioned life blood. Yes. And and that brings us to the other aspect of, mm -hmm. of what's ailing our territory. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Wang F. Louis. Or, yes. Yes. Or healthcare. Well, that was a transition. Well, <laughs> <laughs> before we get forward, we go to Wang F. Louis. Let's first find out if that's one of their primary things. Yes. Okay. So they said energy. Go yes. What is the second primary well, issue that the, you have? Well, well, we're talking about the economy. The economy <laughs> is building uh, the small businesses here. Building the business economy, build, building, making it become extremely business friendly. I'm talking about building the small businesses from the ground up, as well as bringing businesses from the uh, outside. And I believe that we can build our economy through the small businesses and the businesses from the outside. But again, everything revolves around WAPA. For example, you're talking about the, the hospital. Last night it was mentioned by WAPA, the hospitals, both uh, the Juan Luis and the Schneider Hospital, owe WAPA about $20 million. Then we have the, the Streetlight Project, owe WAPA another $11 million. But on and on. But in regard to the businesses, we have to be, be extremely business friendly. I'm a small business owner. And I started my own law practice with no clients, and I built it up to be very successful. Plus, with my husband, my late husband, we had a number of small businesses. So I understand what small businesses need. They need an efficient government. They need to be able to go in and get business licenses very quickly. They need to be able to renew licenses very quickly. They need to have the support of the government. And that's what they would have with us. We are a team that's going to be very pro, not only the businesses coming out, but more importantly, the small businesses and what's so important about the business because we need the revenue small businesses and, and the uh, large businesses they pay uh, salaries they pay taxes and that's what we need to move the economy and that's in order to have money for a budget we need to have the, the revenues all right and so that's why we right. have to build and our small businesses and be extremely business friendly there's so much we can do we can have made in the US Virgin Islands products everywhere we travel every country has made in or every every state every island has made in that area products why don't we have proudly made made in the u.s virgin islands products well i can so say we have I, I can say we have well they will we will I we can will say we have probably made in st croix yes we have yoki handy and tv products Absolutely. and her stuff goes yes. out and yes. so that's the kind of businesses that yes. sure. you may be talking about yes. if you want to ensure mm -hmm. that we're able to yes but export out and the cottage mm -hmm. industries because who who actually benefits from cottage industries women but also the small businesses need money. And what do we have? We have the banks not really lending the money that not, the small not businesses. Really. They're not lending not yes. at all. And on St. Croix, yes. they're not lending. St. Yeah. Thomas has it, but St. Croix But not have even it. in St. Thomas, really. There are issues with banks They have as it well. a whole lot better than we do okay. over here. But the EDA can also open up the lending, working with the, working with the banks. But we need to open up the lending to women entrepreneurs, veteran entrepreneurs, and young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I have two sons in their 20s, and they're away in the States, and they tell me, Mom, what is there to come back home to? I want my sons to come back home. So what do we have to do? We have to make it so that our young professionals want to come back home. And one of the things young professionals, they're very bold these days. They're very self-confident. They would like to start their own businesses. So do we have seed money to help them? But that comes from working with EDA and EDA working with our local banks to have that money there available for them. How does public mm -hmm. transit, because mm -hmm. how does public transit play into your economic development scheme. It's part of the infrastructure, and that's very critical. Mm. But, it's very critical. But I think it's essential to, to establish like, one key thing with our, with our economic plan. Education is a big part of that also. Yes. Yeah. Where we, we've yes. always talked about you know, developing this labor force. Mm. Um, we're, we're talking about educating, almost like a fusion between vocation and just traditional education from the third grade, right? So we need to teach these, these kids strong um, foundations of, of yes. computer yes. skills. Um, we're talking about, Soraya talked about a, a high school that she went to in Florida where they were teaching like veterinary skills and agriculture at a very young age. So these individuals are ready to jump yes. right into the workforce. So we can't wait until the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade to, to really start establishing some vocational education. In addition to the traditional, you know, read, write, arithmetic, we need to have a, a trained skill or trained educational um, um, or schools at, at a very young age so they can jump into the labor force if that's what they want to do. So, 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 so education is a big yes, part of our yes, economic plan yes, also. So yes. it's, uh, very, it's very yes, dynamic. Yeah. The, 
Okay, I'm sorry. Go I'm ahead. Gonna, I can tell you for sure that the read write arithmetic yes. is okay. not taught in public schools. Okay. I have my children who go to public schools. <clears throat> yes. When we grew up, we were taught phonics. Now Absolutely. I hear everybody speaking about, you know, they want to bring in computers yes. and so on. Yes. But how are you going to even understand what a code is if you can't see the D Correct. and understand what the D is and understand the basic rules mm -hmm. for reading? And I'm not hearing anybody. Everybody's well, well, you're going to hear that tonight. Yes. <laughs> you're going to hear that tonight because, like you said, you know, I think education is so important that the, yes. the world is going to run yes. over us if we don't start to get and track and learn and teach our kids what they need to do. This common core education, you know, a lot of pit folks don't know exactly what it is. I would like our, our listening audience to start doing a research on what common core education is about because it's really training our children to jump into a, to a, you know, a low paying workforce instead of some of these high skill jobs that we need to start, you know, I guess, force them in that direction. Yes, yeah. So it's, it's, it's taking literature out of the school, it's taking a critical thinking out of school and replacing it with well, some of this mediocre aren't type of stuff. Are many American jurisdictions removing Common Core from their schools. There's five yeah. states, so not many. There's five okay. states and, and there will be many more to follow okay. because they've seen the ramifications of the results of the fruits of the labor. And we have to start addressing it and researching what's right for the kids and what's not right for so the kids. Yeah, in, terms, in, terms, in terms of education, yes. I see you have here about the dropout rate in the Virgin yes. Islands. Yes. How, how do you plan to address that? You say you're going to reduce the dropout rate. Are you talking this This is the plan to reduce the dropout rate the, in the terms plan, of the computers and all that? Well, the plan is, as a judge, I saw especially our young men because two out of the three uh, two out of three drop of the dropouts are men young men so that's what the statistics show so as a judge what I saw were the young men dropping out from middle school and they would come into school because they were charged with some kind of a juvenile crime and they would tell me judge I have no hope for staying in school why should I stay in school if there's no opportunity I'm not sure. gonna go to college so what I say is that we need to keep especially our young men in school, stop them from dropping out, and introduce these vocational and technical career skills beginning in middle school. Market it to them. It's not going to be easy because uh, our gen this generation really wants quick money. But we've got to market to them, and we've got to think outside the box. We've got to teach them not only plumbing, auto mechanic, um, to be an electrician, but also the 21st century jobs, computer technology, medical technology. Uh, when we go into doctor's offices, we go into dentist's offices, we go into hospitals, who are those people who are, are handling all these machines? They're career and technical skills people that have been taught that. So our vision is we start teaching them in middle school these career and technical skills. We offer them an alternative, either go to college or learn a career and technical skill of your choice. But we have these classes available. Then as they go into high school, we continue in the advancement of these skills. We partner with the business community. I believe every part of our community needs to step up to the plate. We partner with the business community. We partner with the faith-based community. We partner with the nonprofit community. These young men and women, they need mentors. Yes. So we, and they're gonna need jobs during the summer. So we say, partner with us. The times are tough. As I said, our people are suffering. We don't, we want to stop this dropout rate. And once we address the dropout rate, I'm confident we're gonna bring the crime rate down. Because it's no longer our young men. Who is the one, read the newspaper, look at the ages of the young men who are committing the crimes. They're teenagers and in their 20s. So let's give them hope. Let's give them opportunity for a future. And I believe by teaching them job skills that that's the hope and the opportunity that's going to keep them in school, direct them to, toward a future. When they graduate, then they'll have a job. Otherwise, there is no hope. Yeah. So then you plan to change the law, which means that, um, that instead of 16, the government is no longer required to educate a child. So you're going to change that law to bring that age up to 18 then? That's a consideration. But what I want to do is I want them to want to stay in school. And once they're learning a trade skill, I believe very strongly they're going to want to stay in school. And if this is a governor, I'm sorry, this is a governor and lieutenant governor who are really going to be fighting for them. What I was about to say is vocational education isn't mm -hmm. anything new to the middle school. No, it isn't. That's actually uh -huh. been here before. Right. And we've seen the decline in students, we've seen the decline in dropout, we've seen the decline in, in okay. people properly raising and rising crime. Exactly, and a rising, and crime. A rising crime. So, you're telling me that the two to three people that come in front of you... Two out of three are the... Two out of three... Two out of three are male. <laughs> no, two out of three of the dropouts are male. Okay, That's the those statistics. two out of three. I'm concerned about those two. Okay. How do we reach those two? 
who've been exposed to so many different things, uh -huh. who've been exposed to so many different um, opportunities, and who don't even address or even care about the opportunities. We, we get to them when so they're the young. We get to them when they're really young. Some people have even suggested we market it to, to them in elementary school. I have no problem with that. But once they see different professionals market, market, market these career and technical skills as well as college, so they start thinking about their future in elementary school. As I said, it has to be marketed. It's not going to be easy because they're used to quick money. That's the, the mentality of a lot of our young people, quick money. So we need to start marketing it to them and show them and bring, bring people who are in, in the different fields because that really makes an impression on students. But then but, these uh, students yeah. are... Mm -hmm. And when you're governor, you can pardon anybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna hear the third, yeah. we're gonna hear the third yeah. most important thing that you all really, primary issue yes, that you all yeah. wanna work on. Yeah. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to VI Voices. We have with us Soraya Dayasi Kofeld and John Kanegeta, number one yes. on the ballot. Yes. And we were talking as we were leaving, you were asking her to ask Judge Dayasi a question. Yes. Yeah, she, she, she actually addressed the question that I asked, but I still going back to those two who come before you and who don't make it. Those yes. two who end up in Golden Grove. Once they're in Golden Grove, mm -hmm. what do we do then? You know the condition of Golden Grove? Yes, yes. yes. Do you have a plan in place? to address the issues in Golden Grove. I mean, in terms of rehabilitation, yes. because they come out, we have a high rate of recidivism. Yes, exactly. They come out actually worse than how they go in. Yes. So do you have a plan in place yes. to address that? Yeah, people thought that because I'm a former judge, I want to lock people up, defendants up, and throw away the key. And that's absolutely not correct. I feel very strongly in rehabilitation, and we need to bring into the uh, prison system more career and technical trade skills. As a matter of fact, uh, John and I were speaking to someone who's very instrumental at the extension program with UVI. They do have a pig farm and they would like to, to expand that, right. get more into agriculture there. But I I met with the prior warden, Basil Richards, and fortunately I wasn't able to get a tour because the uh, prison was in lockdown so much. But um, I understand that because of a lack of quote unquote funds, there the uh, career and technical training there has really decreased and really declined. So that needs to be beefed up. Because what happens, those young men in jail, they have children. They need to be supported. And 25% of our children are living in poverty, and that's totally unacceptable. They need to earn some kind of money so that they can support their children. And uh, how, and then as you mentioned, the recidivism rate. Once they learn a trade skill, they leave the jail, then they'll have a place to get a job. Otherwise, it's committing another crime and right back in jail. I wanted to ask quickly, because when you had mentioned that, you know, what are we yes. going to do to make them you know, want to be educated yes. and not want the quick money. Right. But if they're looking at seeing in government how, as Emil mentioned before, I mean, you're getting pardons left yes. and right. Yes. You understand? And seeing the corruption run rampant. You only got one. They ain't getting left and right. They're they're gonna gonna start, one. They gonna start coming left That's and right. That's going to be right. But, okay. I mean, but, but we're looking at the corruption. Yes. We're looking at the situation yes. with Mafia. Yeah. We're looking at the um, Hanson right. situation. Right. And even with um, Senator Alvin, former Senator Alvin Williams right. and before. Right. They're seeing all of this and they're like, why should I waste my time getting an education right. when I can be a politician? Not saying yes. anything against you two, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. and make the quick bucks. Yeah. Right. So how how but are you going to address that? Because I mean, even those who are not dropping out, you're hearing those who are struggling and they're saying the same thing. Well, what I tell them, and I've had especially young men tell me that, and I tell them, John and I are a breath of fresh air. We bring integrity, we bring honesty back, we really care about the people. Absolutely. And I will go up to, to young men in the housing communities. And people who are with me, they're shocked. I'll see a group of young men and I will go up and I will talk to them. And what do I do? I approach them and say, I'm a mother with two sons. I understand what you're going through. And I'll start to talk to them. I say, you're the young men I want to really change your lives. And I said, I know some of you probably have been in prison. And, and amongst these group of young men, they're often young children. And I say, you need to support your son, your daughter, and you're going to have a governor that really cares about you. Just remember that. And I said, I'm sure most of you don't aren't registered to vote. And in one instance, a young man pulled out of his pocket <laughs> his voter registration card. 
but we want to reach that group and I think once they hear the message they'll and our sincerity our genuineness then they'll understand and I think they'll really appreciate that someone's going after them because I could I tell them I could have walked right past you because you probably don't vote why should I care but again I'm a mother of two sons and I right. and, and they're in their 20s and I have you know I have a, a God-given passion especially for our young people and our young men because I feel as if they've lost so much opportunity because the government has just turned you know a blind eye to their their condition and we've got to go out we've got to reach them and I, I believe very strongly that once they hear that there's a team that really cares about them and we're going out to them that they will turn themselves around with the help of uh, the government the education plan yes re requires some changes in curriculum yes and some yes. changes throughout the system Fun fundamental right. changes yes. right. now are you willing to re is your administration willing to relinquish some of your powers and give that to the Board of Education yes. and yeah. work yeah. with the legislature we to smile. bring a form <laughs> to bring, a, bring about some effective curriculum changes yes. to the education system. Yes. We, we, we even that. talked about giving some more autonomy back to the principals. You know, so we, we've been meeting with educators um, uh -huh. both on St. Croix and St. Yes. Thomas and they talk about this. They don't even have the, 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 the money in their budget or they don't even have a budget where they determine who cuts their grass. You know, so if a principal doesn't can determine who cuts their grass, I mean, they should be making a lot more bigger decisions than that. You know, so so we would like to give a lot more autonomy to the board, obviously, and give some of this power back to where it needs to be. Because we know we, we've heard that the, the, the seventeen thousand dollar figure per student, we heard it's a little bit lower, probably about twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars. A lot of that money is tied up in administrative yes. costs. You know, on the high level, yeah. we need to have that money come down to the end users, whereas really the children in school and the teachers. I think I think we often forget the teachers. We negotiate in bad faith. They haven't received raises in years. In seven years, in teachers seven years, have not received the, a raise. The seven dollars, years. the dollars, the ratio has to be improved where we see more dollars focused on the children and also on the teachers in schools. Uh, um, but do remember, gov government workers also haven't received a raise yes. for seven yes. to ten years yes. as well. So yes. remember yes. those people yes. no, <laughs> as you shake your head up and down. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. culture, me, you yeah. spoke about cultural tourism. And um, yes. I know that there's right now there's plans to have a cultural curriculum, yes. but they're actually going to be sending out an RFP and bringing that outside group to teach culture, our culture here. <laughs> okay. With that okay. said, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. They're Politics going to bring an out, Politics. outside Politics. company outside to company teach culture. To teach and our culture. And they had a cultural ed office. Curriculum. They have a cultural ed office, uh -huh. but after the guy left, and then one more well, person. They the, no, the, the, the office just went. Okay. We, we got a simple answer to that. Vote for us, and we won't let it happen. <laughs> That's too That's simple. simple. It's that That's simple. Too simple. That's too simple. simple. Interesting. Yeah. What is your third primary issue? Okay, medical care. <laughs> Health care is a human right. President Obama said that, and it is. We strongly believe that. But yet he excluded us <laughs> from his. <laughs> from, uh, from well, he uh, 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 the Democratic. Let's get, let get it correct. Yeah, what? yeah. The Democratic. The people yeah. who crafted yes. the bill, yeah. along with the president. Yeah excluded us am i right. correct i don't know because i okay. said i was saying what i said because that's what i felt okay because he signs off on that bill yes he and did. he signed off on a bill that excluded the right. territories from a very important but our of that representative bill. should be up should have been huh. reading that bill and mm -hmm. screaming loud and saying uh -huh. include the virgin islands include the virgin yeah. islands Before, you would have a governor that would be very aggressive uh, up there in congress's what a trope. face yeah, somebody swinging be, 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 <laughs> before before we even delve in, before we <laughs> delve into the, to the, to the nitty-gritty with the whole of, um jfl you know, issue right uh, it's not the first time we've been left out of this in regards to right in, in regards to right. social security uh, insurance um absolutely we, we've been left out for years uh in regards to to the cap we currently have on medicare you know we're, we're, we're being we're being unfairly evaluated based on the type of economy right here so yes. so we're talking we, we have leaders that are going to step up to the plate we're going to say hey we're going to demand exactly what we as americans deserve we were on another talk so i asked them you know are you an american citizen oh yes are yes. you an american citizen that's <laughs> right. You know, so my thing is, we deserve better. We yes. shouldn't be fighting for these basic Basic. rights to vote for president. You know, just it, it should be very simple to say, hey, I want the same exact rights that you have because we have that. If we move to Florida, we have those rights. If we move to California, New York, we have those rights. But if we stay here in the Virgin Islands, an American citizen, veteran, etc., we don't have those rights. It just seems fundamentally yes, wrong. Okay, yes. so so those are the things we're going to fight for. So now we can get into the degree. Yes, but swing some more. 
So tell us about your health care. Okay. All right. I, I've met with uh, people with the health department. I've met with people in human services. Uh, we need to be aggressive in increasing the cap on Medicaid. Medicaid is going to be the way that we get more and more money into the Virgin Islands. Um, that means being aggressive, that means that the governor needs to partner with the new uh, delegate. And I say I'm a woman attorney, and if it's Stacy Plaskett, she's a female attorney, what better than two female attorneys going up, joining forces, going up to Congress, going up to Department of Terror, going up to Health and Human Services, and arguing strongly on behalf of the people of the Virgin Islands. People say I'm soft-spoken. Yes, I'm so soft-spoken, but I carry a big stick. That's right. And what is the big stick? My faith in the people of the Virgin Islands, and my faith and my commitment to do a good job. And I will go up there, and I'm I'm very creative. I will argue one argument. If they say no, I'll argue another argument and I'll come back and I'll think and I'll create more arguments and I'll continue and not in a mean way or a loud way because I remember I'm a former judge and a lawyer. When we go into the courtroom, we're not in there yelling and pounding. No, we have to we have to maintain decorum. So that's that's how I would be, but we've got to prepare our case and go up with many different arguments. And I believe very strongly we go up and we argue that we need the Medicaid cap increased. We then we, there's a matching uh, rate that we've got to do. The federal government gives us X amount of dollars, which is uh, we have to match over 40%. Mm -hmm. To their 51, we have to meet, match 40 something percent. So we would say lower that matching. Uh, amount and a lot of states they're down to 25 percent I think it's Mississippi that's down to 17 percent to match yes. so why aren't we why don't we get a lower rate Correct. so that's the way once we we increase the Medicaid money coming here and Medicaid is for uh, the low income and we have also uh, Medicare of course but Medicaid now is expanding whereby they're going to cover everyone with breast cancer and cervical cancer awesome. it doesn't matter your income level awesome. So uh, the people at uh, Human Services tell me that they're aggressively pushing this increase in the Medicaid um, funding coming down here. They want to have more patient-oriented centers. We have the East End Clinic on St. Thomas. We have the two Frederickstead clinics here. So the primary care is taken uh, over by these clinics. And so the hospital becomes the acute care center. Correct. Correct. And uh, I believe that's really a, a really great idea that our Department of Human Services is pushing. Um, to the hospital, we need accountability. We need to see where there's waste and mismanagement. Mm -hmm. I believe that every department, what I would do is I would appeal to the people of the Virgin Islands and I would say we're at a $74 million budget deficit. I'm going to call on you, volunteer your time, especially our retired people, volunteer your time, donate your services, and start establishing task force to go in and prepare, do the investigation for us, and prepare reports, because we don't have money to pay, Correct. at least now. And I believe if they see a governor, lieutenant governor, who really they're fighting for the people and are really serious about turning the situation around, I believe people will step up to the plate and will volunteer their time and services. We just can't keep saying, oh, more money, more money. We've got to look at where there's waste and mismanagement. But will, yes. will your administration respect the autonomy of boards? Mm -hmm. For instance, mm -hmm. the Wang Influi board had made yes. a decisive move. Yes. And they accepted the resignation of Kendall Griffith. Yes. Kendall Griffith has been yes. there for two years. This is what we're dealing with. How do we now respect the board? Because you're now saying that the board was very correct two years ago in their position. Yes. And now we are now left with this morass within our healthcare system. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 is your administration going to go jump in just because your administration may be fr friendly with the CEO mm -hmm. or with whomever within those entities? Yes. I believe uh, CMS has said there's too much politics involved in the boards mm -hmm. at the hospital. All right? And so we, we need to do as much as we can to step back. And remember, the one that we board didn't have a quorum. Just now it has. So the, it's up to the governor to nominate people to boards. And if you can't operate with a board that, that doesn't have enough members, but so that's, you know, you've got to you've got to have a board that's functioning. And even now there's just enough for a quorum. Do you know, fill all the seats. Why why don't you fill all the seats? And quite frankly, I believe the boards are too there are too many people on these boards. The territorial board is fifteen members. Why do you what need fifteen members? Board? Yeah. Correct. And it really needs to be thought through. Do we need to have seven or nine people sitting on a board? Why don't we need, just need five? 
Why? Well, it's because seven and nine is just more and more costs added in. They may not be paid, but still there are all these costs with travel, um, with with lunches, etc. Training. Mm -hmm. all right. mm -hmm. I, I, yes. I feel like I'm yeah. chomping into bits over here. <laughs> right, right. Don't worry. You know, well, obviously yeah. this is a very yeah. emotional issue because people lives are at stake, and, and for good reason yeah. it should be emotional. But you know. I've heard comments we should remove on Dr. Kendall Grivet. I, I think it's the wrong time to even speak in that kind of language. I think what we need right now is, is strong leadership. But you know, don't expect this comprehensive plan in 15 minutes for a problem that we've had you know, prior to 2011. Because these aren't issues that just happened. You know, Kendall Griffith, Dr. Griffith, he adopted some of these issues. It's unfortunate there's been a lot of mistakes here that have been identified in the CMS report. But in 2011, we made commitments, right? There was a report that came out that said we're deficient in these areas. But what did we do? We said, hey, we have a plan. We're going to throw resources at it. We're going to do this. It wasn't done. It yes. came back yes. in December of 2013. Um, it was a high level meeting, you know, information passed back and forth. We said, look here, no report was issued by the federal government, but we put some things in place. And it's unfair to say that Dr. Griffith didn't make improvements because we did collect more money. You know, the morale of the hospital did improve, right? But unfortunately, yes, gross, grotesque things like a fetus became missing, um, people procedures were, were wrong. We're still at this point. So what we're saying is we need mentorship, we need training, and we need oversight. We need to include CMS. CMS is not the enemy. They're the ones that look out for the best interest of the people of the Virgin Islands. No, Johnny, no, I lies. disagree with you. Okay. I disagree with you on, <laughs> on, on that you. Dr. Griffith should not be Step removed. aside yes, right was, now. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes. Let me tell you why. We're going to disagree. I think that Dr. Griffith is an awesome doctor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that he should focus his his energies okay. on being a doctor. Well, then we should replace him, but you shouldn't step aside at this moment. No, 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 no. I think he should. You know what I think? One that we need is a fixer. Okay. And Dr. Griffin needs to go back and do medicine. Heal. He's excellent. Do we have I a picture a, now? No, so we, we, we need a picture now. One, Let's find here's one the now. problem. When I read the CMS report, I agree with you. Okay. There's some things that Dr. Griffith uh, inherited. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. There's some things that he improved. But a vast majority of us in that report was under his yes. leadership. It was not a good report. And so okay. I would prefer to see him mm -hmm. going back to practicing medicine. Let me bring in a fixer, Correct. Who, an admin, a hospital administrator, mm -hmm. who can get all of that in order mm -hmm. where we are right now, work along with CMS. Because okay. if you remember, Dr. Griffith's first response was, I don't agree with CMS. Yes. And I'm like, mm -hmm. That wasn't the right response. I, I agree with you. And, and hire so, lawyers. And, yes. yes. That, that was an emotional well, response. That was, we can't that was, afford. Exactly. It was an emotional response that shouldn't have been said. It wasn't an emotional it was response. And it was unfortunate you yeah. didn't say that. Because the response to me was more of a response of my feelings are hurt. Right. Yes. Yeah. Not let me figure out how to deal with this issue. So I disagree with you that okay. we shouldn't move him. I think we should immediately move him. Let him go back to the cardiac center and do what he does best. Um, find a fixer now, to come in we, and do it right we at need to this find moment. That, we need to find that fixer now. No, we're not going to find a fixer until a year old. There we go. Because the board did us, the, tree, the, the board hastily met and yes. approved so, him so, for yes. another year. So in the absence yes. of a fixer, do we keep Dr. Griffith or do we remove no, him? No, no, that's the problem. And that's the question, yes. right? In no, the, abs no, in the absence the, of a fixer. The problem is that question. you haven't even tried to get a get fixer. fixer. Yeah. You now come on, you finally got a quorum in, in more than a year. You finally got a quorum, what do you do? You, you, you didn't hire the person right. who was there that had all these that, issues. That, 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 and that's what we have a problem with. We have a problem with leadership within the Virgin Islands. On all aspects. The, 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 the people have, lack, have lost faith in their leaders. Yes, and number two, true. we have three leaders yes. all throughout public service. Whether it's WAPA, UVI, yeah. the hospital, that are serving too long, whether yes. they're serving in, in as, a, as a CEO, as a president, as an executive director, or as a board member, they're serving too long. We need to set some some limits right. on when these people can cut, leave and, and bring on because we are seeing all of these problems coming from leadership. Correct. Where every board boards are endorsing and rubber stamping what these leaders are doing. Yes. 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 Tell them about the vision. I mean Soraya, you always mention about leadership and our vision and Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I think I didn't mention it, but I'll say it again. Uh -huh. You mean the economic leadership? Not just economic like leadership uh -huh. in regards to the spiritual or the biblical um, scriptures. Oh, oh yes, you know? yes. Oh, oh, uh, uh, we're Christians, but the Bible says when you have uh, leaders who are just, the people rejoice. Mm. But when you have leaders who are unrighteous or wicked, the people groan. And that's what's happening. The people are groaning. For eight but, years? Yes, yes. The people are groaning. So, uh, 
what with Dr. Griffith or anybody in a leadership capacity, there has to be accountability. And who was he supposed to be accountable to? The Juan Louis board that was not even uh, yeah, in existence. But then what do we do? We, yes. we, we board on un yeah, accountability. Yeah. And see, and that's the problem I'm having yes, yeah. um, with this whole thing is that you were the CEO, intern, whatever you want to call it, <coughs> but you were the one running the show. This is the report that we have that goes from 2011, I think, to 2014. Yes. Yes. When you were there for a vast majority of that time, yes. major concerns, people dying, mm -hmm. fetuses being thrown out in the trash, yes. I mean, yes. all kinds it's, of confusion. It's, it's, and it's what horrifying. do I do? Yes. I then reward yes. you with making you the permanent yes. CEO yes. Of, of that hospital. Yes. And I don't understand that. And so it leads me to my segue into the issue, not that, I'm not saying that he is publicly corrupt. That's not what no, I'm no. saying. Yes. But what I'm saying is, how are you all going to deal with the issues of corruption and public corruption and the misuse of our oath uh, as public Correct. servants within your government? Yes. Our well, government. Yes. I made a major statement on the radio yesterday declaring a war on public corruption. And uh, what I would do as governor is establish a VI uh, public corruption task force. It's a multi-agency task force, very similar to Detroit. Detroit created one about two years ago. So it's a multi-agency task force working with the FBI that's going to go in there and begin very aggressively investigating all these uh, different departments, but also the Office of the Inspector General. I believe very strongly in that office, and I've said from day one that office needs to be expanded. They need to have more personnel, more modern technology, and we're, and we're, people are saying, where are you going to get the money? I believe we can move people out around from existing Correct. departments, so we don't have to hire new people. And that's, you know, I'm always thinking like a business person. We're going to create this. Well, how are we going to fund it? Because we don't have any money. So we've got to look, okay, let's move people from different departments into the uh, office of the Attorney General. Um, we need to be able to uh, look at the Alvin Williams case, for example. Alvin Williams, there are 19 sets of sealed documents. So I called yesterday for unsealing those documents. And there are rumors in St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix, that there are people who are running for the Senate and running for governor or are people who are associated with these aspirants who are the te tentacles run to Alvin Williams. And and it's really yes. scary and that's why I that came is scary. out. And, Very scary. and when I speak to people just wherever I go in the grocery store um, or at the bank, what do they say? The first thing is WAPA. They want a governor who's going to address WAPA. The second thing is public corruption. Public. public corruption. And there's no other candidate who's willing be, to be bold enough to step out. I'm a lawyer. I'm a former judge. I've stepped out and I said, we've got to declare a war on public corruption. But when, how can we say yes. you're going to declare a war on public corruption mm -hmm. and include all these other agencies when the federal government also mm -hmm. So, um, support and encourage this public corruption. I'm going to give you a good example. Okay. This case with Alvin Williams. Yes. Alvin Williams, that was small according to the newspaper, went to the federal authorities in um, sep September 2010. 20, 20, uh, September 2009. Right. At least a year mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Yes, September 2009. Okay. A year before a general election. Yes. And how do you not convene a grand jury mm -hmm. before November 2010 mm -hmm. and, and, and um, disqualify him and indict, indict him? And I'm going to tell you, I, as a, as, a citizen, as a resident of this territory, as a United States citizen, mm -hmm. feels the federal government was in collusion with the administration mm -hmm. because the administration did not want to be tied to a corrupt senator. Okay. So how do we, again, make sure that people can believe that what we're saying is going to actually happen, that we are going to actually weed out the bad seeds at all levels yes. of government. And that's what was my concern with the Alvin Williams case, because he pled guilty January 2013. It's now 20 months later. 20 months later, those documents are still sealed. I can understand they're going through an investigation, a grand jury is, is studying the matter, but now it's 20 months. We're coming up to an election. And I think it's it would be a tremendous disgrace and embarrassment for the people of the Virgin Islands. We elect a new governor or senators, and then they're 
they're somehow entangled with this conspiracy. We need to be focusing on our future and our economic development and looking at new ways to do things, not to be dra dragged back to the, and be smeared in this uh, public corruption with Alvin Williams. So if, we, if they unseal these documents, then we will know who's entangled. Do you think the people who are named in those documents don't know? They've been interviewed by now. It's been 20 months since he pled guilty. So they know who they are. So who benefits by its sealing? Them, who already know they're under investigation. We, the people, are denied that information. And I, I think that's a horrendous situation to put us voters in, because we don't know who we're electing. Yes. And I, I agree with you, because the federal government is taking their sweet time about pursuing this investigation. It's not a high priority for them, but it'll be a high priority for me to put this public corruption task force together and begin the investigations. But no other candidate right. wants to talk about the elephant in the room. Corruption affects our economy. It affects our morale. And unless you see a governor aggressively dealing with corruption, and who better than a lawyer and a former judge to start speaking about it and who's going to say, I've dealt with major criminal trials. As a judge, I did murder trials, first degree murder, rape, robbery. I wasn't handling, you know, just the, the, the probate or the minor things. I was handling major jury trials. And I understand what goes on. I understand dealing with witnesses, witnesses who have to be subpoenaed, then don't show up in court. You've got to send the marshals after them. I understand all that. So I'm calling. We've got to step up. We've got to. We've got to address this public corruption. Right. Now, what are we talking about uh, corruption? Yes or no question. The pardon. Yes. You think the governor <laughs> yes was no. right? You think the governor was right? For yes or no? As a governor. Uh, what I would look at... He has the right to do so. He has the right to do yes, that, correct. yes. But as a governor, I look at it as a former judge. And I say, has a person shown any ap apology, given an apology? Has a person shown any contriteness? Has a person made any restitution? And in Senator Hansen's case, I see neither of those. Uh, perhaps she's made an apology. I don't know if any of you have heard no, of that. No, she, she was hasn't. convicted by a jury of her peers. Right. All right. So she has not apologized. She, I think, the amount that that was reported is about one hundred and eighty thousand dollars that she owes. Has she paid that? And the the Internal Revenue Bureau said that they can't reveal that information because it's private information. But I believe if she paid it, she would have revealed it. So I would call on her. What monies have you paid? Reveal it to us. We, the people and the public, want right. to know. So those two things. If it's no, then I, as a governor, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider a pardon. And I look at it from a judge's point of view. I look at, I'm looking for it from a from a from a person, from a, a, a resident yes, of the yes, original yes, point yes, of view. Yes, yeah. If I didn't pay my taxes for that law, mm -hmm. I would be in jail. You would be in jail. Yes, yeah. And I understand uh, whether it's correct or not, but th it was just three years that they were not filed. But perhaps there were other years that were barred by the statute of limitations. But They're I don't barred. know, we're looking at They're three, barred. we're looking at at least three years. All right, and show your contriteness, show, apologize. I'm convicted, I'm sorry, uh, you know, I understand that I'm a lawmaker. I, I sit in a very responsible position and I want to I want to apologize and set the standard. Now see, that's what the, the two to three, yes. the two of three yes. um, young men that dropped out that come yes. to your court, those are, that's what they look at. That's, that's right. Okay? That's and right. That's what and that's makes what it difficult yes. for people to buy into yes. a lot of yes. the regular past push them right. forward. Mm -hmm. Because they look at that, they say, well, look at these people. They're lawmakers. And they can and do they whatever can they want. Right. They can violate the law. Yes. Nothing ever happens to them. So why yes. should I have right. to follow the law? Right. And that's a major problem. Until yes. we deal with this public corruption, yes. we right. can't really have, they won't buy in. Yes. To a lot of these, the things that we want to put forth. And that's for why when I approach them, I tell them, I'm a mother. I have two sons. I'm a former judge. I'm a lawyer. I understand what you're going through. My heart goes out to you. And they hear that. And they see my sincerity. And they hear my sincerity. Because I speak from my heart. I'm not making up things. Yes. I don't have a pre-prepared speech. I'm speaking from my heart. And I can tell you, if there are 10 young men, they're all sitting there. They're respectful. They listen to me. And at one of the housing communities, they even invited me back. That's a quick one. I'm not sure if you're aware, though. You know, um, we talked earlier about our, our court case and, and winning the Third Circuit Court of Appeal. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if you're aware that the AG actually petitioned the 15 um, judge panel in the Third Circuit to, 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 back. Yes. Yeah, to, yeah. to look it over again. So, you know, with, with all the he issues. He's doing everything with, else with, with, all, be doing. With, with all the issues, let's say Senator Hansen and, and yeah. a chikungunya virus and, and, and the stuff with, with the Wangui Hospital, they found it important enough 
that, that did, to keep us off, to petition the 15 judges where recently we got actual yeah. written rule and 13 of them just said, hey, you know, we're not even going to. Well, they there. all of them said that we're not, we're not going to consider it. We're not even going to consider yeah. it. So. You mean yeah. they actually fight to keep people off the ballot? Yes. <laughs> At the AG's office? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so we, we yeah. want, the, we want the people to understand, like you said. What, what, clearly there will not be <laughs> appealing yeah. Yeah. the yeah. latest yeah. decision. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. where the extent of the government okay. was they're doing to keep um, Judge Sarai and myself off. Let me ask a question because this is very something. Um, I think, I'm hoping that we can all agree, right? Mm -hmm. That a strong sinker means a strong yes. economy, yes. Virgin yes. Islands. And then you're going to have a lot of people who are, um, they're going to ask about the Diageo deal because, mm -hmm. you know, we have the other Caribbean islands, mm -hmm. the other Caribbean rum makers who have us in the world court now yeah. because of yes. that deal. Yeah. that's right. You know? So, is that something that, if you're able to, that you would go and revisit? You know, and the big question is if I'm able to because it's a written contract. Well, yeah, Judge Gorman Gorman said yes. Judge Gorman says you could. Okay. Yes, Judge Gorman did say yes. Apparently, yeah. because he ruled against the AFT. <laughs> that yeah. He ruled against all unions. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. filed suit against it. But he says, says right. the yes. government, if they feel that there's an issue, they can breach contracts. Right. Uh, so apparently, you can. Interesting. Yeah, apparently, he did say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll see. But I'll tell you right now, in regards to the Caribbean countries, which I consider my neighbors, yeah. if, if if it's about economics and them taking money away from us, I don't think we should stand for that. I think, you know, we have to look out for the best interests of our people. Um, it, it's rum, you know, it's it's not something of the lifeblood that, that we need to drink or eat on a regular basis. We just happen to, to reap the rewards as a Vaughan being an American territory, an American flag, except we don't get a lot of, we don't get SSI insurance. So, okay, do we take away some of that rum rebate and give me this in, in turn? It just, it, it's gotta be balanced, okay? So, but, but as a leader, I, I'm not willing to give up anything to appease a neighboring island. Are you making the, are you making the people's argument because the people exactly. is saying that that's our that's our rum rebate money and you're giving it back right. to Cool and Rum and the yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, So yeah, right. you said you go after the Caribbean countries and, and stand firm. Would you then right. stand firm with Diageo and Cool General Rum saying hey, wait no this, this this is our money. We have to go back and look at this deal because our people are hurting. Would th is that something that you will entertain? Nothing's off the table. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Nothing's well, off good. the table. That's good to hear yeah. because it's, I think it's extremely important that we revisit that. Mm -hmm. That we revisit, uh, revisit a lot of the things mm -hmm. that has occurred within the last eight years. Yes. Of course. Yes. With, you know, with clean eyes. Yes. And determine how we're going to proceed yes. and go forward yes. um, with that because it's extremely important. The contracts that WAPA has, we need to look at that I because. Was about to mention yeah, that. WAPA yes. has to be contracting, looking at the best interests of the people of the Virgin Islands. Not at WAPA's best interest, but our best interest. And that's definitely contracts we need to look at. You know, and whatever other contracts contracts that are out there we don't know until we get in really what is out but there see, but, my, yes. but my thing is if one deal looks bad mm -hmm. oh. then all deals should, should be suspect. reviewed of course be because you're talking about the king grass company mm -hmm. then okay if that was a bad one then we need to then start but wapa has a deal with them right yeah, yeah. Uh, can they produce power tomorrow they can't no but my thing is then if that one is suspect then we need to look at all of wapa's deals and review them because you mentioned about attacking public corruption mm -hmm. and putting a task force in place. Yes. But yeah. I remember special legis uh, special session. The governor can call special session. Right. Right. Would your office ever call a special session just to get an ethics bill passed? Yes. So we can establish yeah. standards yes. in the Virgin Islands. Yes. 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 Because that's what, very good. That's where do we start? Yes. Yes. We need to have yes. established standards. I've been a yes. proponent for at least looking uh -huh. at the Illinois ethics bill okay now i think it's really stringent but mm -hmm. i understand why because theirs was really to curtail the mob yes, yes. Yes. Um, so they're like really they're, really they're straight governor yeah. who was yeah correct yeah but <laughs> it's a good starting yes. point yes. to look at and yes. see because even okay. to going out to lunch with a potential person may come before you and they buy you a soda yes. is a violation of their ethics yes. law because so it may appear to be a that you're, it's a bribe. Right. Right. It's sort of it's a dollar. Yes, yes. And so what it does, it puts people on major notice to be very careful where you're going and how you're doing it. And I think because we don't have those yes. kinds of major ethics, we are doing whatever they want to do, yes. and we end up with Diageo. Right. So we end up with these kinds of things that are going on. But not just Diageo, but remember Chicken Shack. Look at Chicken Shack, where we talk Chicken Shack, which is an innocent deal, mm -hmm. where we have the, um, the owners of Chicken Shack that support several political candidates who mm -hmm. voted on the deal, supported the governor, mm -hmm. a family member that would work for the governor's security detail. So those are things that we need to consider. In, in Illinois, yeah. in Illinois, all be unethical. Yes. But, yes. but even though 
it may not be unethical here. If it smells stink, we should say it stinks. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't ever say that because we said it's not a rule on the books. Understand. So we can that's skirt around you know, it. That, that's yes. unfortunate. Because yes. yeah. ethics have to apply, I think. Yes. Like, we have to stand from the moral top standing, down. Right? Yes. Yes. And I was very happy to hear you talk about expanding the AP yeah. uh, yeah. office. Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, Mr. Van Dierhoek has done yes. an excellent yes. job yes. as the IG. And I'm hoping that he doesn't go anywhere for a while. Yes. Yeah. Or at least he's able to still be there to train someone to be yes. just as good or better than he has yes. been. And he's done a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Problem, he has no prosecutorial authority. And so he has he to rely yeah, he on the AG. He yeah. can't even refer it to the federal government. He can only yeah. refer to but our local AG. He goes AG. before our legislature every year asking for the authority, the statute to be amended so that he can refer matters to the U.S. Attorney's Office. That law will be changed. Yes. Good. Good. Under this administration, that law will be changed. Excellent. He needs right. to be able to, to refer for prosecution. We're serious about this, you know, yes. this war on corruption, yes. okay? Like yes. I said, we're, we've dropped the bomb with the initial statement, and we're ready to really move forward. Yes. So this is just the initial impetus. And we're, we're going to show, we're going to prove to people at Virgin Island that we're serious about this. Mm -hmm. uh, this no. will be a mean standard question. Uh -huh. So does this start with Governor De Young and our $500,000? Mm -hmm. Well, I've publicly made the statement that he needs to pay that money back. All right. And not a depreciated value. It's not a car. Depreciated value. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what that meant. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not a car. We're asking to get back. Yeah. I want all the money yeah. back plus yeah. interest. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask this question. This is what I've been asking a lot. So, um, we've heard the recent issue with um, marijuana. Yes. Legalization or decriminalization? And I say we already have decriminalization on the books. True. All right? Because a judge has the right to expunge a record mm -hmm. what a judge for simple possession and I can tell you as a judge I'd never put any young man or woman in jail for simple possession I would rather see that person rehabilitated and their record expunged and I doubt severely that any of my colleagues did we know the jail is overcrowded and I read in the newspaper that the warden said that uh, less than three percent of the inmates are there for simple possession what is less than three percent is that one <laughs> uh, or, or is that zero? <laughs> so I, when I've spoken with Senator Nelson, he says, uh, I, I told him I disagree with him. He said, oh, no, we don't disagree. We just have debates. <laughs> um, so I said, you know, it, it, there's already a law in the books that allows a judge to expunge the record. And uh, I said, show me your statistics. Because the preamble to his bill, it says about this state does this and this state th does that. And there's so many people in prison in this state. And Well, I don't care about any, any place else in here. What are your statistics here? And I still haven't seen any statistics. And less than 3%, that, that does nothing to me. And I know about my practice as a judge, and I know about my colleagues. We know the, the prisons are overburdened. It's ridiculous to send some money on simple possession to jail. And I do not want to legalize marijuana. There's because when I saw the young men come before me, it's either they were smoking marijuana and they dropped out of school, or they dropped out of school and smoked marijuana. And I just, I'm absolutely against it. And I, I understand the medical, for all the medical, we yeah. Don't, we don't support recreation. Yeah. Well, and I, all the all medical for medical. Uh, well, we disagree on this. It's not that it's okay. It's not that I'm a strong okay. report, not, yeah. but uh, you know, after yeah. seeing some of the documentaries I've uh -huh. seen, and I've seen, like you said, the, the results of children, mm -hmm. but, but it's not being smoked, right? Yeah. It's being used right. in these it, oils it's and extracts. Right. You know, exactly. so yes. I still have a lot of yeah. research to do, but I believe that there are some benefits to medical yeah. marijuana. But in regards to recreation, uh, no, I, I don't support that. Yeah. Okay. okay. I hope one of these days I can convince you <laughs> that we need to move away from this thinking that. Even looking at it as not a, not a drug, but as a herb. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about the smoking herb, but the mm -hmm. herb that has beneficial sure qualities uh -huh. to the people on this earth. Because mm -hmm. marijuana does not need any sort of processing mm -hmm. to, to be utilized by whomever is going to use it. Right. Rum requires processing. processing. Rum is legal. Aspirin requires processing. Aspirin is legal. There's a mountain of drugs that has so adverse correct. conditions. Because if you listen to all of these commercials on TV, this so one that <laughs> extreme diarrhea, blah 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 blah, Make and it's and, and it's supposed to yeah. So, but these are legal. What well, this is a plant that exists on God's right. earth. Now, I'm gonna tell you straight up. I do not smoke. I have never. We mean, we mean a lot of people like you. We mean a lot of people. But with this I opinion. agree with the proponents that we may right. need to subtly move it from maybe move to criminalization, then to legalization, and we have 
good policy regulatory pro, uh, pro policies in place sure. to administer uh, this uh, do you think we at this stage can have good regulatory policies in place we can't pay the rules well, not know, we, the we, we can you know, but well, we, we have a new one correct yeah. yeah. we, we, yes we, we, we need to yeah. we need to start somewhere a very simplistic view right you know, as, as a youngster, I, I like reggae music and I go to a concert, you know, and I, I'm exposed to marijuana there yeah. because, hey, that's just what they do there. Or what I go to the reggae band up in, in the rainforest. Yeah. But when I'm on the beach with my family and somebody has a disrespect to light up right next to me, you see, I, I think a lot of some of this, um, I guess, negative opinion towards that comes from that. Where if you're going to smoke marijuana in your home, you know, that's a personal choice. But when you come to the, to the beach and you expose my family to that, I have a problem with that issue. And, and I've confronted individuals and fortunately everything has gone, you know, well, because they understood of the disrespect Because issue. you have a gun. Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the first one in our argument. It's about respect. Uh -huh. <laughs> Whatever our advice is, we should have but respect for each other. Right? But you can have laws that yeah. preclude exactly. and prohibit mm -hmm. the public smoking of it, mm -hmm. um, even though you may allow it provisionally. But we're running out of time. Yes. As I yes. want you all to let everybody know your number, yes. where they can find you, they have more questions for you. Yes. And um, while we close up. Okay. Well, we're number one on the ballot. John and I fought very hard to stay on the ballot. We fought five months in the court system to stay on the ballot. And uh, we were very fortunate to draw number one. So we asked the people of the Virgin Islands to, and we ask you humbly to give us your support. Yes. Elect us on November 4th because we are genuine, we are hardworking, we are honest, we have integrity, and our hearts are to serve. We, it's service above self. And that's why we've continued in this battle. That, and we're fighters. We're going to fight for the people of the Virgin Islands. Do our website? Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of information on SorayaForGovernor.com. Please um, visit our website. Uh, please donate. Like I said, we can always, <laughs> we can always use that yes. financial help. Yes. Um, we're here for the people. Like you said, the people is number one. And we want to be number one in the people's hearts. So we want it to be a mutual yes. agreement right here. And, and we're committed to serving the people of Virgin Islands. Don't compare us to any other candidates out there. We're, we're, a, we're a breath of fresh air. We're, we're different. And we're ready to do the people's work starting right now. Yes. Spell it. Soraya for Governor. Soraya for Governor.com. <laughs> no, spell it out. S-O-R-A-Y-A-F-O-R Governor.com. Your yeah. first name might be a little. Yes, exactly. Yes. That's yeah, a good point. Yes. 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 It's a very ethnic name, which is yeah. a good point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we want to thank okay. you all so thank much you. for tuning in tonight. Yes. Thank you for being here it's with a us. Pleasure. Thank you. As you know, this is our election cycle, and the 2014 election is a critical election. We've said that before about many other elections, but we believe here at VI Voices that this one truly is, is. Um, a critical election. It is. And we're asking that you continue to ask questions of the individuals who are seeking to run for public office and seeking your vote, that you watch and question every single thing that they do and if they don't want to answer your questions and more than likely they're not the persons for you to cast your vote for but what i want you to also understand is with our board of elections it is also extremely important that you go to that section and you vote we've had a lot of challenges this year um mm -hmm. stemming from the what, what's yes. what i want to use i want to use um the ineptness of mm -hmm. our elect some members of our election boards and we got to make sure that we have a transparent board. So we have to go down on that list, look at that list, and make sure we're voting people with integrity and people who are going to be transparent and, in, and transparent and ensure yes. fair and just yes. elections. So yes. be sure that you go out and vote. If you're not registered, go register to vote. And be sure to let your voices be heard because it matters. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank